Hello, everybody. Um, my name is Christopher Paul. You can call me Chris. Um, I'm here today to present uh, Bell Tower, um, a monitoring solution for LDAP. Uh, my hobby is uh, cycling. Uh, that was a nice day. I like to get muddy. And my favorite ride is across this little bridge here down to this little beach called Kirby Cove, right there. Yeah. There's another shot. Okay, uh, first I want to express uh, thank you to my hosts here. Um, it's been great to be in Sofia. <coughs> thank you very much, Nadeja, for your help. Um, thanks for Simus. Um, thanks for the rest of your talks. I learned a lot here, so. Lago Daria. Um, uh, okay. Also, oh, I'd like to introduce Jeremy Diaz, my coworker. Jeremy, are you there? You can say hi. He's up at four o'clock in the morning for us. So, <coughs> thank you also to Jeremy for joining us here at the hour. Um, uh, let's see, I've been an independent consultant since uh, 1995. Um, I've worked um, with LDAP since about 2003. Um, sort of got my start uh, in the 90s working for World Talk. They sold an X400 gateway, email gateway. Um, once you've got email systems uh, hooked up to each other, then you need to synchronize the directory. So that's kind of how where I got my start. Um, LDAP was sort of the natural path to follow after that. Um, I've mostly worked in support roles, uh, operational, um, and integrations. Um, one thing I noticed um, working in operations is that um, what I would call operational requirements are the last thing that people think of. I know uh, the common term is non-functional requirements. I never really liked that term. To me, non-functional requirements are uh, operational requirements. You should think about backup. You should think about monitoring. You should think about security uh, earlier on the process. Um, from 2008 to 2018, <laughs> I worked for a, a telephone company. Um, there I supported very large LDAP environments, um, 500 million entries um, of, was one of them, um, replicated across the United States. So replication delay was a big concern. Um, operational response time was a big concern. Uh, typical day I would um, need to check if there was no replication delay. Uh, we get a call from one of our clients saying that uh, response times were slow, so would need to do some research, would, which would involve um, log file research. In the early days, we used grep and uh, SSH for loops. So we would, you know, run a for loop and then grep across an array of servers, and that, that was obviously not very efficient. So I thought a lot about monitoring, and I thought a lot about <coughs> how to centralize logs. Uh, and uh, once we stabilized, or, or actually in order to stabilize the LDAP environment, um, that's one thing that um, uh, I worked on was centralizing the, log, the, the logging and then also adding a lot of monitoring. <coughs> Um, yeah, so e even uh, Wikipedia defines non-functional requirements um, using the word operation. So just to back up my idea that, that uh, non-functional requirements might be called operational requirements too. Let's see. So, yeah, um, 
I really like being an independent consultant. Um, I got to a point though I was a little bit too busy and uh, really the story of, of Bell Tower is um, a story of a, 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 me trying to grow my practice and, um, and um, things not going as planned. And um, one thing that I realized uh, is uh, improvisation is as important as planning. And uh, you'll see why. Um, so let's see, Rex Consulting, uh, we've been around since 2001. Uh, we do, do a lot of monitoring. Um, we do a lot of LDAP. Um, as you know, L, uh, LDAP is very stable once it works. So once, uh, uh, once LDAP was stabilized at the telephone company, I did a lot of monitoring and in, in, in setting up uh, monitoring for other applications. And, um, and Bell Tower came out as um, really a, um, a, a way to teach Jeremy LDAP and to have him occupied while he was on the bench. Um, because the plan was, of course, <laughs> that um, I would hire him and then all my extra work he would have and then we'd get him fully booked. But of course, that didn't happen. So uh, we sort of improvised and we started development on this, on this project, which I'll show you here in a minute after I talk about it a little bit more. Um, so, uh, as a result of Jeremy uh, needing to learn LDAP and also improve his, mo his monitoring skills, uh, we began work on Bell Tower. Uh, Bell Tower is an all-in-one LDAP monitoring solution. Um, it's meant to um, track, uh, ingest log files, CN equals monitor data, um, and then display them in a, in a usable format um, using graphs, um, and also have alerting. Uh, current monitoring solutions for LDAP are a little bit lacking. Um, today's LDAP solutions, um, well, let's put it this way, there aren't, there aren't any new ones. Current monitoring systems don't, are, are missing metrics. Uh, their user experience is uh, maybe not very intuitive. And uh, I've seen uh, solutions that involve using email for data delivery and that's not very efficient obviously. So I'd like to introduce Bell Tower. Um, we're providing monitoring for system metrics or we intend to provide monitoring. We don't have system metrics yet. Um, we're going to be adding those. Performance metrics, uh, logs, and replication data. Uh, UI uh, is very use, easy to use. Uh, we provide, we use uh, proven open source solutions such as Influx Data and Elk Stack. And for the, the front end, we've got uh, Node.js, Express.js, um, well, MongoDB is uh, not the front end, but uh, part of the web framework there. Um, here's a slide that shows the basic architecture. So let's see, we've got, uh, got logs, ingestion, um, using FileBeat, which is part of the Elk stack. Um, system metrics, CPU load, memory load, CN equals monitor being ingested by Telegraph. Uh, Telegraph loads Influx database. Uh, FileBeat loads Elasticsearch by a log stash. Um, we're going to be using capacitor, Elasta alerts for alerting. And uh, we've written our own API called the Bell Tower API. Um, 
Then, of course, there's the UI, Mongo databases uh, storing some basic application data, configuration data. <coughs> Uh, some of the features uh, Bell Tower will provide will be modern graphs powered by D3 and Chart.js. Um, you'll be able to see changes as they happen. Um, you'll see this in a minute. I'll, I'll give you a demo, a live demo. Um, and then, of course, LDAP query performance data. Uh, setup uh, will be easy once we release it. Uh, be able to just download it and run it pretty much. So the main thing that we want to bring to your LDAP infrastructure is visibility. Obviously, you can't just read log files and see what's going on. So um, by graphing this data, now we can use it, we can correlate it with other events. And if you get a call from a customer and they're wondering about response times, um, you'll be able to see at a high level what's going on and then hopefully drill down. Uh, this is a little bit of a comparison against some other tools that are out there on the, on the market. Um, CN equals monitor, I don't know if that's being, if anybody uses that anymore, that's pretty much the only one that I know that's out there. Uh, it's lacking um, modern UI, it's lacking lo logging. Nagios we've used to a certain extent. It's, it's also not really a full-featured LDAP monitoring environment. Uh, here's the roadmap. We're looking at a release of uh, first quarter 2020. So, okay, so let me give you a demo. Okay, so here's Bell Tower. So we've got, uh, as you can see, th six main types of graphs. Um, this one at the top left here is uh, showing the bind IDs that um, are having the highest response time. So it's, it's, more, it's more or less like a bar chart um, some might call it a bubble graph, but this is telling you at a high level um, which applications are suffering from high response times. Um, you can sort by hosts. Um, you can also, or filter by hosts. You can also filter by uh, DN, bind ID, and um, also uh, operation type. Um, uh, top right, uh, we've got a heat map showing operation count. So of the different um, bind IDs um, and the different operation types, we're showing which ones are, are seeing um, large operation counts. We can expand these charts as well here. So you can get an eye. And when you hover over it, it's going to show you the... Uh, the bind ID that um, is a concern. Uh, let's see here. Um, this graph right here is uh, average, average operation time by uh, DN. So it's another heat map. Instead of showing operation count, it's showing operation time.
and uh, we can we can also sort these. Um, uh, we can also filter these by time as well. And possibly the most important chart is operation response time. And uh, there you've got that. And of course we can we can sort by we can sort by host name if we want to, and we can also change the time. And uh, let's see, down here on the bottom left, we have uh, a Pareto chart. This is also a very useful one, I think. Um, it shows you at a high level um, the buckets of your response times. So, you know, we, we like to see a larger bar on this side with the lower response times. This is a development environment, so we don't really have it optimized, so. That's, that's why the, the bucket shifted to the, to the right. And let's see here. Um, and then finally, um, we have operational count. Um, and this is similar to the operation response time, but it's, it's, of course, it's the count of operations. And again, we can sort by uh, uh, the host, we can sort by the bind DN, and, and we can sort by operation. And let's see. So replication data. Um, so replication chart, that's another really important um, metric. It's something that people want to monitor from a high level. Um, I think, uh, so originally, um, so this is a very basic, uh, th this isn't quite done yet. Actually, each one of these lines is, is two lines because it's bidirectional. So at some point, we're going to show that probably by spreading these. These are actually two lines that are overlapping. We'll probably just spread them out so in curve them so you can see that, that each side is flowing. And then also, at some point, we're going to have, when you click on them, it's going to show you on the right pane the, 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 the data. Um, let's see, so um, the, the roadmap here is uh, eventually we want to support um, groups as well. One, one issue that we have is, um, some directory servers have a lot of bind IDs, and that's kind of difficult to show on, on this chart because this only has like five, it's about for five. So if we, if we group the bind IDs, then we can, uh, we can see, for example, which domains are causing the highest response times. That, uh, that's all I have. So if you have any questions, please let me know. Thank you for your presentation. Uh, I have one question. So to me, you look, uh, it looks like you're using Elastic Stack mostly. So you use bit for collecting data, like yep. while bit, audio bit, metric bit, not audio, audio bit here, but metric bit. And uh, also you store the influx or like uh, Elastic Search. Mm -hmm. You use log stash to you know, process them or query filter and stuff like that. Also, you said you mentioned UI, but to me, it looks like uh, you're using uh, Kibana, right? Kibana, that the interface, no, no Kibana? Yeah, um, hi everyone, I'm Jeremy, the, the main developer of this project. Uh, so we're not using Kibana at all. Um, so this is our own custom UI. Um, all the graphs are actually generated through D3 and Chart.js. Uh, so we're not actually using Kibana or uh, Grafana or any of those uh, graphing libraries. To generate any of this UI. Okay, cool, cool. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, first, uh, remarks on your 
table uh, comparing your solution with uh, NGS. For information in adaptable project, we, we provide some script for CN monitor and replication status, so you cannot uh, put a red cross in this uh, in this case because we we, we, we do provide some, some script in NGS to, to do that. Uh, my question was uh, about uh, performance because I, I already uh, uh, try to uh, use uh, Elasticsearch uh, Logstation Kibana uh, to grab uh, logs from OpenNDAP, uh, but the solution was really too slow to import all the, the, the logs uh, generated on a um, production server because uh, we have a lot of requests on OpenNDAP. So my question is, do you really import uh, all the logs uh, generated by uh, this log, or do you use another way to, to collect uh, operation statistics from the ADAP server? Yeah, all this data, well, um, for right now, yes, we're grabbing all the data generated from syslog, and there are some issues with it. There's some, we do see a good amount of, uh, of log buffering, um, but we're, we're working on other solutions that we uh, will be able to get data more straight um, from uh, uh, from LAP or, or maybe reduce the buffering from uh, from the our syslog. Uh, but yeah, we have an agent. The agent grabs all the logging data, send it to Logstash, parse all the data, and send it to Elasticsearch to, to index the data and then have it easily searchable. Do, do you try to, to know uh, how, uh, how high was the rate limit? Uh, how many requests per seconds uh, you can uh, uh, import uh, as logs inside your Beltover system? If I say I have a uh, directory with uh, I had a thousand uh, uh, requests per second, uh, do you know if this can fit in, in your system or this is too high. Uh, we, we don't know yet. I mean, we, definitely uh, uh, performance is going to be an issue at some point. It's going to be something that's going to be a problem for probably a, a, another day. Uh, right now, we're trying to get the basic functionality um, rolled out. Um, not really looking at very large systems, but in the long run, absolutely. And um, that's one thing, fortunately, I have a lot of experience with is working with uh, larger database sets. So I'm um, hoping I can bring some of the skills that I had working with those to, to this project at some point. Jerry, Jeremy, do you have something to add to yeah, that? Yeah, so the performance of uh, the bell tower will really be limited on how, how well uh, the elk stack is set up. So um, maybe if Elasticsearch is giving you some issues, uh, you can, well, we'll have uh, maybe an ability to cluster Elastic to maybe improve performance a bit. Okay, my, my idea when I, I tried to, to, to work on this was we have maybe two, uh, two kind of uh, metrics. We have some metrics that we want to have in real time, like uh, the, the response time or the replication status. Uh, we want to collect it at real time, but maybe uh, some, some uh, data like uh, statistics let's say uh, how many searches or bang per second we have, uh, is something we may not want in real time, but uh, maybe each, uh, each evening we can collect all the logs and, and uh, have statistics. Do you plan to, to separate this kind of data, or do you, do you want to, to merge all this data in, inside the same system? So, I'm quite catch that. so are, are you asking about like batch processing the data? Yeah, because, uh, because uh, scanning on the logs is a very uh, heavy, uh, heavy process, but just having the adapt response time is very easy to have in right time. So well, are, are we forced to, to have all this at the same time, or can we imagine that having statistics is not something we want in right time, but to have the, the day after or the hour after? I mean, one th I think that one thing that's poss possible is to do some sort of uh, upfront data reduction or, um, you know, maybe collapsing some of the statistics to weighted uh, minutely averages. So that, that would be one potential solution for 
an environment that you couldn't handle all of, all of the individual um, data points. I, I, I just think that you need to think about it because uh, you will have some performance problem if you want to grab in right time all the logs from the other side. FileBeat itself is pretty good. I mean, uh, it, Logstash is much more of the heavy duty worker and, and you can run Logstash on dedicated hardware. And, you know, FileBeat shipping the logs really isn't, you know, it's a C program, it's not Java and it's pretty efficient. And on uh, your comment on Nagios, we love Nagios, we work with it a lot. And yeah, it can be obviously extended to very far, um, but that's all custom work, and that's not specifically designed to solve problems with LDAP, uh, which this is designed to do. This is quite better than Azure. I agree with you. Thank you. Um, if I may, I wonder, just one. Of course. It's okay. So uh, just to add, yeah, so to add, um, like you could, uh, you know, bit configuration, you could do configuration on bit, so you could sort of like uh, filter data as well, but you could also put log stash both, like before Elasticsearch and after Elasticsearch, and you could sort of like query and filter. But uh, what I think is, uh, have you, my question is, uh, you know, Apache Kafka is uh, perfect for like uh, for processing streaming data, like millions of data. And so have you thought about using Apache Kafka with ELK? Oh, oh, you can't, you can't hear me. Oh. Kafka. Apache sure. Kafka, have you thought about using ELKK? Like a lot of people use Apache Kafka with Elastic Stack, and it, it'll mm -hmm. improve performance for sure, and I've done it. I've, done, I've used Kafka with Elastic Search, and I've uh, mostly yeah, visualized it. Um, I don't think you can hear me. <laughs> M maybe not, but yeah. maybe we will. Uh, yeah, I, I hear. Um, yeah, Kafka is something we'll, we'll look into. Um, right now we're focusing more on uh, getting everything working and then we're doing optimizations. Um, we do a little bit of uh, processing uh, here and there um, throughout the, the ELF pipeline, but yeah, um, performance is going to be a, a big uh, goal of ours. Yeah, so I mean, I think Jeremy spent a lot of time learning these basic D3 and um, it, you know, it, he's also got to balance it now. We're starting to get a little bit more busy finally. So he's got to balance it with uh, working with customers. Um, so I mean, this really started as an, a side project. Like I said, it's an improvisation. Um, of course, you know, it's, we're, we're trying to plan this as much as we can now that we're involved in it, but it, it originally just started as a side project and an improvisation. And um, uh, I think D3 has been a heavy, um, heavy uh, component to learn in terms of, you know, the amount of time that it's taken to, to master it. So uh, performance will be the next thing that we're, we're going to look at for sure. Definitely the goal is to support the very large systems out there because yeah, most of most of the target users would be very large systems, I think. Uh, yeah, we're going to have an alerting component as well um, pretty soon too, and um, yeah. Any other questions? Yeah, one more. Um, what do you need? Uh, uh, maybe I overlooked it on your on your diagram. But what do you need MongoDB for? Yeah, what do we need MongoDB for? Why? Oh, that's that's going to be just configuration settings for that um, Meltar interface itself. So really, um, LDAP-wise, you're really looking at two two data stores. Um, so you have Elasticsearch for your logging, and then uh, for uh, your application data. Everything's going to get stored uh, with, with uh, some metadata, some timestamps, uh, with an influx DB. Okay, uh, just, uh, um, I mean, this is. Mongo is just uh, administrative, really. It's not so much a technical, but more a <coughs> psychological or marketing aspect that maybe uh, the stack that uses both MongoDB and PS using two heavyweight engines, and maybe that's not as desirable. I'm sorry, I, I missed the AW. 
Do you so say what would it be and Elasticsearch at the same time is it's okay, you can do it, but then you have to run two uh, like sort of two NoSQL databases at once and it makes it maybe unnecessarily complex because I think what you need can be done in Elasticsearch alone. And uh, I mean from an from an inf from an information standpoint point of view maybe that which is stored into MongoDB, this configuration data is also some sort of input for the statistical analysis. So, you know, just just an idea. Thank you. We have time for more questions. No. Thank you. Thank you both. Thank you.